All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by again. Appreciate it. This is Chris Petri here. We're doing a beautiful wet into wet technique on this painting. It's a seascape painting, landscape. You know, we could call it a landscape and seascape. We have some uh, trees, brush, branches, interesting effects here. Water. This is like a bay along the ocean. Some marshy areas here with mud and bogs and lots of fun. And this sky wash too is just incredible. Tons of water. The glazing technique, tons of water. We're going to show you everything right here, how to do it. So I'm going to remove this here. Put the painting in view. You can use this to work from. So this will be your painting you work from, your finished painting. And you just try to replicate this, try to do this same exact painting as you go. And you're always going to remember here we're doing two glazings. The first is the light wash, and the second wash is the darker washes here, where the uh, trees are, the branches, the bushes, all the little twigs and stuff, all that fun stuff there you can do. Some marshes here, some mud, some bogs, some really interesting water here along this area here, the deep ocean out here on the right. Have fun with this, enjoy it. We'll get right started in just two seconds. Okay, so we're getting back started here again. We uh, just saw the finished painting. I'm really excited. I want you to paint from the finished painting. Uh, here on my channel, you'll always hear me probably say numerous times to try to paint from finished watercolor paintings because I believe that gives you your best bet for uh, recreating the look of watercolors, the authentic look of watercolors. Um, so I'm hope. Does that make sense? I hope you're um, trying to uh, follow that uh, game plan and that method of painting from watercolors. I, I got my best success with watercolors by painting from uh, finished watercolor paintings through books, through YouTube videos, um, through DVDs, whatever the case. I was always trying to, after a while when I was painting watercolor, I realized like the best way is to try to basically copy watercolor paintings themselves. And this way I can kind of get the feel for it and kind of see what I have to do to get that look. So, you know, I would adjust, counter adjust, so on and so forth until I got just that right look of what painting I was trying to follow. So here we're going to do a wet and wet, a wet into wet technique. So for that, I have to look at a watercolor painting and look at it and say, okay, I can see the artist use a wet into wet technique because it's got lots of water. I can see the beautiful washes. So now in this case, you, you know, once, uh, I would say, you know, in the beginning of the video, you can pause the video and work from the, the first few uh, minutes where I show the, my finished painting, or you can go all the way through the video, my video here, and then at the end, you'll see the finished painting as well. At the very end of the uh, video, you can paint from that too as well. It's pretty much the same thing, but I made it so that you could actually not have to worry about uh, going right to the end. You can actually start right from the beginning and do it from there. Just hit your pause button and you work right from your phone or your laptop, whatever you have, and you copy what I'm doing here. So, But it's good to watch the uh, video full through so you can kind of see how I did everything and then you start the video again and then pause it in the very beginning and this way you can work from that. And you can also use the sketch. I'll do a drawing, a pencil drawing again. First thing, I'll do a pencil drawing and you'll see that, uh, how I create the pencil drawing. And then, and then another way that's good too, you can work from my pencil drawing. So you'll, you'll get your paper, you'll tape it down, you'll do your pencil drawing, you'll copy my pencil drawing, and then you'll either go to the end or you'll go back to the beginning and you'll use my finished watercolor painting to, uh, to work from so that you get your beautiful finished look. Or you can go and work as I work and stop and pause I know many of you, you use different techniques on how you how you create your paintings from my videos, and that's fine. You do what you think is working for you the best. So I know everyone's got a different way, and that's great. I encourage you, whatever works for you, do that. 
So let's get started. So we saw again the finished painting first to start out with and then we just looked at some brushes we're using, watercolor brushes, Da Vinci Maestro brush, brushes here, watercolor brushes, you can use synthetic brushes as well. Princeton uh, brushes make great synthetic brushes that look just like these, they handle a lot like these and uh, you'll have good success uh, with Princeton uh, brushes. I've used those a on a number of occasions and I have a lot of Princeton brushes also in my uh, arsenal. And then these are my brushes that I use though on a more regular basis, the Da Vinci Maestro brushes, 16, 14, Alvaro Castagnette needlepoint brush, and then a number six uh, round brush here too as well, Da Vinci Maestro. So I have a number of Da Vinci Maestro brushes and then the Alvaro Castagnette needlepoint brush, which is a great brush to use for fine details. So we're going to use all these brushes in this video and this exercise. <clears throat> have fun with this. Paint it numbers of times until you get that right look where you kind of feel like you've gotten the essence of what we're doing and then you know you've got it and then you can move on to the, something else. One of our other videos where we might be doing flowers, landscapes, or, uh, or seascapes, figure painting, whatever it is, keep working at it. And uh, we'll just pretty much use those brushes, maybe a ruler we can use, and then just a number nine mechanical pencil. So let's start out. And again, you'll always see me start out. I think this is the best way to start your watercolor paintings. You have your tape around your border. And then we're just going to kind of find a, a comfortable place to put our, or again, we're doing a landscape uh, slash, you know, seascape, because it's going to be some water and landscape here. Uh, style painting, wet and wet. So here, I'm going to say our, let's make some land here. Land. Land here. trees here and that should be about it and then we'll just take this idea and just bring it right across the page right across the rectangle across our watercolor paper I'm using uh, Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper excellent paper I also use Fabriano studio paper which is excellent as well you get beautiful washes if you're doing wet and wet studio Artistico our studio uh, studio is sort of the um, uh, student grade Fabriano paper and it comes in large pads and you can buy the large pads that are uh, on uh, line you can find them online art stores and so forth those work great so on this I'm using some Fabriano Artistico which is the real fine paper the real like that's the best paper you can get by Fabriano the Artistico paper but you can also use the studio grade paper and it works almost as good. I, I like this a little better, but all that studio paper from uh, Fabriano works incredible. So those two for these style paintings, these landscapes and seascapes, wet and wet, either, either one works great. So we'll take our pencil line here. Let me just get a little pencil uh, lines going here just to give me a guide. So here we're going to do some pencil lines just to get our some of our uh, coastal mud and shoreline here like that there we go then we're going to go up a little bit more this is going to be our land again the same kind of deal straight across you can use a ruler let's use a ruler on this one so I'm using a ruler on this here And then we can do some trees over here. Okay, some trees and hills over here. I'll go a little darker so we can see them. 
Sometimes the lights are very bright here that I use on my uh, videos. So I'm hoping you'll see this pencil now. I'm going a little darker. And just kind of go in there. And so now we have an another, you can do a little more maybe, you can use a ruler here too, maybe just to get a couple lines. Like that. Maybe a couple more. And these lines here that you do with your ruler here and there just gives you a nice straight line that you can kind of use to when you're adding in some colors and things you'll you'll follow that those lines. So we have our distant hills and then there's some trees here too. Let's not forget those. Let's do some trees. Make it look a little more interesting. So I'm just doing a little more trees here in the distance maybe. Maybe they're kind of flowing one way, the trees, because of the prevailing winds along the shoreline. A lot of times you'll see all the trees leaning in one direction. So you can kind of follow that, um, fo follow that type of uh, style with your sh when you're doing seascapes. A lot of times all the trees along the shoreline are sort of trained to lean in one direction because of the uh, winds coming from a certain direction, usually maybe let's say from the west to east. And then if you see you want to, sometimes you'll take an eraser and maybe erase a few lines if you think you've made something, maybe you've added too many branches for the trees, you can, you can lift up a little bit with your brush or with your eraser. So I did that a little bit here. And we have a nice flat area here where we're going to have just the water so you can feel like you can, if you were in a boat or, you know, maybe just uh, looking at this scene, you can go through the scene and go out into the deeper waters over here on the right. So there's just a, a little bit of ocean where this might be a bay and you have that little just line of straight water. So we don't want to block everything out with hills. If that makes sense. So I'm sure you're doing well with this right now. You've got your drawing in of your trees, your hills, some of your sand uh, areas here and marshy uh, uh, bogs along here. Uh, and then you have your water in the center area here of these two areas. Your center area is mostly water with some little bits of, uh, you know, maybe some sandbars and things here and there, just a little interruptions in the in the water so that it doesn't look too contrived okay and uh, once that's done and you have this part of your pencil drawing done the rest is really simple you can um, we're gonna make a big big sky here with lots of wet and wet sky techniques maybe we can add a little tiny very I'm, you're not gonna see it on the video probably but I'm gonna make a little couple marks just for some areas that I'm going to add in some lighter and darker colors in my sky and washes. So you create your sky the, the way you want to. And when you do your sky, remember, have fun with your skies. Don't try to be too, uh, um, I should say, try to be very loose with your skies, free-flowing. Skies look best when you do them in a free-flowing, fun manner quickly and just let it be and then that's it trying to do clouds and make puffy clouds and try to do that's really tough yeah it's really not doesn't usually look too good i've done many of those paintings <laughs> trust me so if you can just do your your sky wash real simple real quick you're going to have much more fun with it and it'll look a lot better so trust me on that don't get too fussy with your skies they tend to get worse when you fuss around with them too much and especially with wet and wet. Wet and wet is really fast. You're going to see. We're going to do this whole painting in, in a quick amount of time right here. So let's stick around. Hey, also too, we're going to come right back and start our painting. But first, I just want to say, hey, I'm thankful everyone here is joining along. Please subscribe. Why not? Every week we create new videos. We do landscapes. We do seascapes. We do figure painting, flowers. 
We do all kinds of street scenes, everything interesting, we do it here, everything watercolor. If you hit that subscribe button right down there on the right hand side, you'll this way you'll you'll get my videos every week and then you can choose which ones you want to work on and I would say just watch them even if you're not so interested in let's say flower paintings at least watch it you'll learn some things and then if you have to paint flowers in a couple years from now you'll kind of have an idea of how to do it because you'll you'll watch the video and you'll kind of learn a few little techniques or so so again the more you watch the more you learn the better your watercolors are going to be knowledge is power always remember knowledge is power so the more you're watching these videos gaining the knowledge, seeing things over and over and over again, they'll stick, you'll have the knowledge, and then when you do your watercolor paintings, they're going to look so much better. I Trust me on that. Uh, so let's take a quick break. I'm going to get some coffee, and I'll be right back. All right, we are back, everyone. Thanks again for watching along here. We're doing a gorgeous wet into wet landscape seascape scene uh, it's along the water there's some landscape there's some trees there's some water so we're having the best of both worlds we're doing landscape and seascape wet into wet and again I promised you that we're gonna show you how simple it is to do this scene wet into wet the first thing we do is we um, do our hash marks so you'll want to do your hash marks when you use my, you know, best thing to do is to pause here or pause when you see the pencil drawing completed and then you'll do your pencil drawing and you'll make your hash marks first. You can put them on both sides if you want to as well over here so we can just demonstrate here. You know, you can put hash marks on both sides of your, uh, of your tape. You have your watercolor paper tape down, and then, uh, and at this point, when you have your pencil uh, drawing completed, then you're, you might do a tiny bit of light sketching, just very barely touching the paper with your pencil to kind of get some of the shapes that you might want to do in the sky, and you can do your sky any way you want. It's your painting. You're the artist. It's your painting. Do the sky the way you want to. But uh, please um, try to do your sky very, very fast and free and free flowing and don't waste any time on it. Just get it done quick and let it, let it, that's it, let it go. So you'll see now we're going to do our first wash. The glazing technique is a series of washes, one over the next. And in this painting, we're going to do the first wash lighter, let it completely dry, and then go over the second time with a, a dark the darker uh, tonal values or the darker colors so you'll see how we do that so the first step is you want to have uh, clean fresh water you'll see here I have a bucket uh, the buckets a little um, you know I have used the bucket all the time so it's got a little bit of um, you know staining to it I guess or whatever but but it's this is clean fresh water that I just changed out and then all you do is just take your paper and use your largest brush. This is a 16 uh, Fabriano watercolor brush. You can use a synthetic watercolor brush too. And you just want to dampen the whole paper. So I'm just taking this clean, clean water and just dampening the whole paper. So I'm just starting from the top and just dampening the whole paper on down. My my board that I work on here is on a slight angle, very little angle. It might be on the angle if you were to take a um, pad of watercolor paper and then you put underneath it like a two inch roll of tape. That's about the angle that it's on. So I take water and I just flood the paper with water, not too much, you know, I just dampen the whole paper, put lots of water on there, slosh it on slosh the water on there okay now you wouldn't want the water flooding off onto the carpet or the or the floor that you're where you're working but you want to put enough water on there that it's really wet and then once you have that like that you let it sit for a second or two if you need to I always keep tissues handy paper towels handy 
and I might just wipe up a little bit of the water that kind of flows down a little bit on the tape. So I just wipe up the water around the painting with some paper towel or tissues. I have tissues here. So that's all. And then once you do that, you're kind of let you're going to let this sit a little bit. And then I would say after about a minute, you'll be ready to put some washes on here. So usually the perfect time is you wet your paper really good and damp. Then you start mixing your paints. And by the time you're done mixing some of your colors in here, it's ready to start putting your washes on. So we're going to do a beautiful sky. We're going to use some cobalt blue. So the, the color scheme here is very simple. Cobalt blue. I'll put that right in the middle here. Okay, cobalt blue. Um, I would go with a little bit of raw sienna over here. Raw umber, I should say. I'm sorry. Raw umber. We'll mix some of that in too with the sky color. And maybe some yellow ochre we'll put down here. As well, a little purple up here. We're going to add a little ultramarine violet. I like ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton. That's my favorite purple. Ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton. I find that's the best violet color I've seen out there on the market. I use a lot of Winsor Newton paint, mostly Winsor Newton. I find that their paints are the best. The look of them, the way they handle. I also use Holbein paints. Okay, so we have our blues, maybe a little French ultramarine blue up here. And that's it. So pre-mixing really helps you a lot. And the fun thing about the fun thing about the glazing technique is you have plenty of time. You saw we wet our whole paper down. We have plenty of time. We let that sit over here. We mix our colors out. By the time we're done mixing our colors out, we're ready to start putting our washes on. And you'll see how easy this is. So I'll take my uh, brush and I'm going to take some cobalt blue and I'm just going to start flowing it on the paper. See my brush strokes here, right? Fun, free, just... This is going to be really fast. Paint quick here. Don't mess around. Does that uh, make sense? To just get it in and then get out. Get in, get out. Quick. Don't fuss around. A little bit of purple to mix in there too, a little bit. Purple. Then we use a little bit of that raw umber, like we said. We'll use a little bit of that over here, over here. We want to add little bits of um, interesting color. We don't want to make it all just one little bit of uh, yellow ochre down here. And you can go right over with the yellow ochre over the rest of the painting. And the same thing with the blue. You could take some more cobalt blue and just put it over the rest of it, like the water area here, there's some water. And then let's get some of that purple. Just a few spots here and there. Put some purple in there too. Maybe in some of the uh, tree areas where the uh, hills are. A little purple in there too. And you'll see this is the light. This is the light colors, but the sky wash is going to be basically one, one go. So try to do your sky wash in one, tr one go, one glazing. So in the first glazing, the light glazing, you want to get your sky perfect for yourself. Get it good. You got to add a little more darker darks. Get some more cobalt blue. I'm doing that now. Getting some more. couple little spots of color here and there with the cobalt blue. And I think if you do that, and then use some water to flow it down like that, a little bit of damp water. 
you're going to be happy because you're going to have done you you're going to have completed your sky wash in one try one go one glazing here yes we have to do more glazings down here darker colors down here in the uh, water areas and the hills and the trees but look at that we have our sky wash completed and if you want to make a little darker dark add some French ultramarine blue with a little bit of umber and maybe even a little bit darker up here at the very very top of the sky like that look at that oh looks great okay now again we take our tissue maybe be very careful not to disturb your paper with your tissue don't don't wipe up don't wipe onto your paper just go around your tape and lift up any water that's dripping down excessive water so if you see excessive water building up along the bottom of the tape just take your tissue or paper towel and just kind of pick up some of that water along there and then over here same thing any puddles of water excess water paint just don't try not to touch any of the paper itself like that very carefully and that should be it we're going to take another break Again, the glazing technique is also really fun because you, you get to take breaks. I love taking breaks. So I'm going to take another break, get some more coffee, and uh, let this dry. And then when we come back, it'll be dry. And then we'll do our hills, trees, and some of our marshy areas with some of our uh, bogs and mud and some little twigs and stuff around here. You'll find this is really going to look exciting once we're completed 100%. But for right now, once you get that first glazing on there, let that dry 100% complete. And what happens too is your paper is not going to buckle. It's when it dries, it flattens out again. So right now the paper's all buckled. I don't know if you can see that on the, on the video here. But the paper right now is really buckled a lot. It's all bumpy and wavy. So that's why we let this dry 100% until the paper flattens out again, really nice and flat. And then we go over and we'll do all the rest of our painting, the darker washes. You'll see it looks great. All right, so we'll come right back in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks again for sticking in here. We're really doing a great job. We're doing the glazing technique where we're going to do it. We're doing this beautiful landscape, seascape style painting. We have some mountains, some trees, some water, beautiful sky. We did our first wash of the glazing technique and we always remember, let's just recap a little bit of what we did. First thing we did is we did our sketch. No problem, that's easy, we got that done. Part two, second part, we wet the whole paper down with clean water, has to be clean fresh water. So we have to empty our water, you know, watercolor bucket, clean it out, put fresh water in there. Then we take that fresh water, we put a coat of water a wash of water over the whole paper and let it start to soak into the paper and we mix our paints while that water soaks into the paper and then at that time when we're done putting in a little bit of our paints in our palette we're ready to go and we did our first wash and as you can see we wanted to do our sky wash all at once on that first wash and we got that accomplished we painted it we got some of the lighter colors in there the cobalt blues we mixed in some raw umber we put in some purple, ultramarine violet by Winsor Newton, the best purple I've found yet. And I also put all, the, you know, I put all those colors into the sky. Maybe some more, uh, I did some yellow ochre in the bottom of the sky. So the sky has got a little bit of a nice golden glow at the bottom portion around the horizon line of the sky. So that's got that little warmer feel along the horizon line. And then the bluer colors up top. And then I even added in some darker darks, which was French ultramarine blue and raw umber and cobalt blue up top just to have a little darker colors up at the top of the sky, just to give it that nice, like, darker feel up at the top of the sky. And then as the sky goes into the distance, it gets a little lighter. And then, of course, we have our yellow ochre along the uh, 
this portion here. Now, the paper is still a little bit buckled, but not, not nearly as much as it was before, so the paper is a touch damp, but there's it's very it's just just a little bit damp and that that you can start working on again you just don't you just want to make sure your paper is really dry so that there's no uh, real uh, dampness in the paper just a touch damp is okay it's better to let it dry completely if you're more experienced in watercolor you might try to start painting a little bit sooner but that's a fine thing you have to practice that's the whole thing. The more you practice, the more you get the feel for watercolor and you'll be able to know when you can start going back in and adding subsequent washes to your painting without having it uh, get out of control and ruin the washes that you just put on. So if you're newer at watercolor, and I know I have some new people here, thank you for coming by, the new people here. Uh, you're the greatest. You're giving it a shot with watercolor. You can keep coming back. You'll learn more. And this is one of the first things you learn with watercolor is if you're doing a glazing technique, you do the first wash and you just let it completely dry 100%. And then you come back when it's 100% dry and you work over top of that. If you've got a little more experience, you'll notice you can go back in a little quicker and a little sooner. And that's what we're going to do here. It's a little damp, but mostly dry. But we'll, we'll work on this now. Now we're going to do our darker colors, you'll see. So now we're going to go in and get burnt umber raw umber, burnt umber, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre in there too, and then a little bit of um, French ultramarine blue mixed in with the ultramarine violet as well, and a little bit of green, a little bit of sap green, and a little more of French ultramarine blue. So you want to get a darker kind of wash now. So to get the darker dark washes you have to use French ultramarine and also, too, you can mix in a little bit of ultramarine violet, which is a, a pretty dark, dark uh, purple. Some burnt sienna, too. That's a dark red earth color. And let's start putting in some darks. And as you can see, I'm going carefully here. doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to get some lines here and there of the water. And you can see I just mixed all these colors up. And here we're just going to go with the flow. There we go. You can see I'm just doing some hills. Maybe some lighter areas. You can mix some lighter areas by adding a little bit of water. And then pick up more paint for darker parts of the hills. And then here, very little. We can want to phase, phase this out here, these hills, just like that. And then uh, I think that looks pretty good. A little more green, French ultramarine blue, and sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna. So we're just using the darks. Make a nice dark green, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, like that. And then maybe we're just going to do a little, we're going to do a little tree tree uh, shapes. Now to do tree shapes you're going to be better off taking your brush and holding it on the side. You can hold it either this way or you can hold it this way on top. Probably more comfortable to hold it this way the way you normally hold your brush. But you want to you want to slide the brush across the paper like this You want to go across the paper like this and kind of slide it across in a circular motion to get some of the tree shapes. See how I'm doing that circular 
Then you can use the tip of the brush too as well and do some little, the very pointy point tip of the brush. You can use some of this. We'll use our needle point brush in just a second. But I'm trying to get that feel of the wind by the ocean. It keeps all the trees flowing in a certain direction. They all bend and they just grow in this kind of a feel. Okay, I might have went too far out there, but that's all right. The main thing is we're getting the feel of the trees. So now I use my needle point brush. And then we can do some finer lines, which look great, like that. Like that, like this. Pick, pick up more paint when you need to. And you're just flowing your branches to the right, like this. If nothing else, this is a really fun exercise of working with the brushes, with the paints, and you'll see that you really have a good time with this. And again, I'm doing some more. I might take a smaller brush now. Let's use the six, number six watercolor brush, Da Vinci Maestro. Let's go in, purple. Get some purple in there. Maybe go in, we'll get some really powerful Prussian blue. Maybe we'll go in and do a couple splashes. I think that's good. A little more Prussian blue here. A little more Prussian blue over here. I'll add some up here too in the sky. And if you can imagine, be very careful up here in the sky with your if you're going to add that Prussian blue up here. Just add it in a few spots. And that'll just kind of blend everything together. And then some more green, sap green mixed in with this other mixes of burnt umber, raw umber. We're using the same colors over and over up here that we used when we started. So no need to worry. You just keep working the same colors in. Then now Again, the same colors, burnt umber, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, sap green. You can stop the, uh, you can stop the video to write down the colors if you, if you need to. And then I'm just going to keep moving these lines parallel, back and forth. key is not, not to um, go over all the lights. You want to leave a lot of your lights in your water. So you make some darks and you make some lights. Like that.
and that looks good. And, um, I use my tissue just to wipe up some of those darker darks that were starting to flow down into this section. That's all. You just lift up a little bit of that paint and then you might want to put another couple lines across there just to go back in and do a little detail work. And the key now is to let this be as it is. Don't don't try like always under finish your paintings if that makes sense. Try to under finish your paintings a little bit. We could keep going on and on and on with more details but it'll it'll be better if we just get it in. Second wash you just saw we did our second glazing. I might go with a couple more darks. Burnt umber. Um, French ultramarine blue, sap green. Maybe we'll just add in a little bit of the really dark darks, maybe here and there. Just a couple dark darks here. And again, have some fun. Don't be don't be afraid of um, having fun and making things uh, maybe not perfect reality. You know, have some uh, I agree. I agree. Maybe some of you will notice, okay, the trees might be not perfect here. Some of the branches might not look perfect, but that's okay. The fun of it is doing the glazing technique is the fun part. Getting these washes in, these beautiful really wet washes it really just looks fantastic and then we take some worse some more uh, Prussian blue blend it in a little bit I'm just trying to blend that Prussian blue in a little bit over here And I think that's perfect. I really hope you enjoyed this. Again, the wet in, the wet into wet method is really fun. We'll do more of it on my channel, so I'm hoping you'll subscribe and uh, come back week after week here on this channel. You'll learn tons about watercolor technique, methods. Um, you'll learn all about the fine details of watercolor here. And we'll uh, just rem we'll move this out of the way. And we'll move the painting over a little bit. Let's take off our tape. Ooh, you can see how good it looks when you take off that tape. Look at that. I know there's some oohs and ahs out there going on. And everyone, you can do this. This is one of the most... Uh, fun and simple techniques because you're just really getting the most out of watercolor with all the luscious paints and water, tons of water, and letting that water and paint do all the work for you and then you're just really basically doing not that much really with the paints or as far as the brushwork. Brushwork you can see here wasn't all that fancy. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Feel free to add in a boat or something like that, you know, or a lighthouse. You can add a lighthouse into this if you want and get more creative. But this is just basically a simple wet into wet technique. The sky looks great. I'm trying to zoom out a little bit here. There we go. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Happy painting.